now here's your host of This Is, John and Bill. Hey, Bill, we're at another amusement park. You know, that's right, John. We're here today, and we're in Doswell, Virginia. And where are we? King's Dominion. That's right. Not to be confused with the King's Island up in Ohio. That's right. They were both made by the same corporation. Um, they were held by that corporation for a while. Now they've moved them off to um, Cedar Fair. And Cedar Fair has done a lot of great improvements in this park. Yeah, they have a lot of great things that they've done. They've added different roller coasters. Um, they also have a wonderful kitty uh, kitty land here. And I'll tell you what, this park is hopping. That's correct. They expanded out. And um, I mean, there's just such a vibe here that you just don't see and, and feel at other amusement parks. You know, that's right. We have the roaming band coming by us right here. And you can probably hear them in the background. Um, it really gets the juices flowing. It really makes the park have a nice atmosphere. That's right. And you, and you can only find this entertainment and other wonderful forms of entertainment only here at King's Dominion. Dominion. Because this is King's, King's Dominion. Dominion. Yes, we're here at King's Dominion once again. Yeah, that's right. And here we are. Uh, we've just come in the main gate, and we're looking down at uh, La Tour Eiffel. Or commonly known as the Eiffel Tower. Yes, that's correct if you don't speak French. <laughs> here we are at the main entrance area. Um, you're looking down what they call International Street here at the park. And it's filled with little shops and curiosities to take your money away. Yeah, that's correct. Um, in the past, it did house some uh, different eateries and things like that, but now it's just mainly shops. I believe that's a Starbucks. No, yeah, we yes. don't want to talk about yes, that. Yes, no. yes, yes. Places to get coffee. Places to get coffee. It also adds sort of a international feel to this park, which is sort of lacking in a lot of other um, a lot of other parks yeah that's true um it's kind of a shaded area uh there is some seating along the uh fountains section there and it's off to the left here um but uh you know it's just a nice place to spend some time and do a little shopping do a little you know uh perusing maybe some eating of items and things like that and very uh european style to it though yes now we're coming down towards the end of the street here and um, we're going to um, show you again the entrance to the Eiffel Tower and um, and we're going to show you that it is um, it is not to scale. No, I believe it's a one-third scale. A one-third scale. And there's some interesting history how um, the, not this particular model, but the one that's at another park was obtained. and. You'll have to find out some of that history on your own uh, because it's just going to take us way too long to talk about it here. That's right. And now what we're going to be doing here is going around the corner and going into their uh, basic western section of the park. Yes, yes. A lot of wide walkways in this um, park. Um, it's tree-lined. It is very um, relaxing compared to the hustle and bustle of a lot of the larger parks in this region as well as other areas. That's correct and we'll go down here and uh, they do have a nice water feature off to the right hand side here on the trail and uh, just a well done little bit of theming here in the park and it just makes you you know calm it's a nice calming effect for the park. Yes it is. Um, here we are in the, one of the little plazas they have here. They sort of set things up in around plaza areas um, and then branch off into different um, rides and attractions from these plaza areas. Yeah, that's correct. And they have a couple little shops here. And then as we pan to the right, um, you're going to see that they do have a uh, log flume ride here. That's pretty popular on a hot day. Oh, yeah. And when is it not a hot day in this area of Virginia? That's very true. Here we have a little bit better close-up view of that that action. Uh, 
there's not too many of these log flume rides around anymore. No, they seem to be disappearing, unfortunately. And here we have the uh, Liberty Bell. Um, this was installed in 1976 for the Bicentennial. And it's a replica of the actual Liberty Bell. I don't believe it's to size. I think it's actually a little larger. Yeah, it might be a little bit larger. Since I've never seen the original. No. Here we are, another street. And this is their theater. There, um, where they have um, wonderful productions put on for the guests. Um, I believe they have a Cirque du Soleil act going at the, this particular time. Yeah, that's correct, and it's a wonderful show. And if you want to talk about flying through the air, here you go. Yeah, yeah. Um, just make sure you don't do too aggressive on this ride, because you might crack the whip on it. Well, speaking of crack the whip, it looks like we have a pretty pro, uh, pro on this ride here. Yeah, these have gained in popularity, They're sort of retro rides go. Um, I'd like to see some other retro rides come in, come back, maybe. Um gives a certain feel to the park that you normally don't get. They do have some paper rides here. Um, paper rides meaning that you have to pay to ride. One of those happens to be the go-karts here. Yeah, that's right. And, and these are a nice set of go-karts in this park. Um, you know, it's a, it's a pay-up ride, but it's a lot of fun if you want to do it. That is true. this particular this particular one is a really good course and here we go with the antique car ride here um, this is very nice. It takes you through a wooded section of the park. Uh, there's a lovely magnolia tree that you go around. Yes. Uh, there's a little pond off to the one side. And in fact, we're, we're going to let you uh, see this here for yourself. That's correct. We usually do these type of ride-alongs on trains, but no train here. No, this park uh, unfortunately is lacking a train. However, the, the antique cars does you give you a nice ride through the wood and wooded area here and um, listen a little bit to the sounds of nature, as well as a little humming Tin Lizzy engine. <laughs> yeah. The park itself is um, actually quite young. Yeah, the park was developed in 1975, um, originally when it was open. Um, but yeah, it's a, it's a fairly young park as parks go. Um, it was part of the Paramount chain for a good long time. That's correct. And then previous to that, it was part of the Marriott Corporation. Yeah, that is correct as, as well. Um, but, yeah, it, it's a it's a great park. Um, they've developed it over the years, added rides. Some things have gone away, but, um, you know, they're constantly upgrading and um, making it better for the public here. That's right. And... You, a lot of these parks at this particular time period, when this was developed, um, they were looking at removing, which is considered the star of the entire park, roller coasters. I mean, Six Flags originally was not going to be developed with any roller coasters involved in it at all. The sister park to this one, Kings Island, put a roller coaster in. And... Basically, they're responsible for the roller coaster wars. They shot the first shot, and well, we've been battling it out ever since. Yeah, and once they put one in Kings Island, they decided they needed a, a basically carbon copy of it here, which you'll see later in our video as well. Um, but yeah, it was uh, all basically it was a rebirth of the wooden coaster and the roller coaster in general. Yes, yes. If it wasn't for these two parks, because they were both being developed simultaneously talk about a headache <laughs> yeah well um we're just so glad that they did make these parks um here we're coming up on a little covered bridge which is a nice little uh additional theming to this uh, particular antique car ride that's correct and this is a very wooded area very wooded park 
which is um, comforting since a lot of these parks end up having a lot of the trees chopped out of them. Yeah, um, and especially walking around on concrete all day uh, with the sun beating down, a little shade goes a long way. Yes, it does. I think we're coming around the last bend here. I think that's possible, yeah. I think we're coming up on the station here. But, uh, you know, this is a fun thing. Um, young children love these rides because they can actually steer the car. Yeah, we know. There's a center divider that actually does steer the car if they go off. But um, they enjoy it. And, yeah, here we are. We're kind of coming around the bend here. There's that pond I was talking about earlier. Yeah, and it's just, like I said, it's a nice relaxing ride. You don't have to battle anything or go crazy with with um with excitement you can just actually sort of just relax and mellow out yeah and here comes another car into the station and then we'll show you a little more of this park that's right The Grizzly. This is a very unique roller coaster. It is so unique that we can't really get you a real good shot of it because it's in a wooded area. Um, amazing ride. Um, maybe totally underrated. Oh, I think so. And really, what they're able to do with this ride in a height of only 87 feet on the main lift hill is just amazing. So, I mean, if you get a chance, come out and ride Grizzly. I don't think you'll be disappointed. That's correct. And I've always said that the best roller coasters, wooden roller coasters, have been the sub-100 category to about 125 feet. After you get it past 125 feet, they become notoriously bad. Yeah, that's right. It's It seems like they just have gone beyond the limits of what the track and the trains can kind of do comfortably. Yeah, that's a good way of putting it. Here we are on another one of our wide, super wide walkways going through the park. Um, we're outside of the entrance to the dino area, and we're going into a new themed area. Yeah, that's correct. Um, here in the distance you can see uh, the park's uh, newest slash revamped roller coaster. That's right. And we're going into the Coney Mall section. Now, yes, you did see that go upside down. Yes, this is a wooden structure ride. And yes, it is one hell of a ride. That's right. This thing throws you around. It gives you air time. It's just great. It's twisted timbers. That's correct. You can even watch this fly by here. Yeah, there's no one on it at this time, but wow. Talk about speed. And that band you heard earlier, well, we caught up back with them again. And um, they're going to give us a little bit of a song here and dance. And we'll let them play out. We'd like to thank the band for giving that song to us. Yeah, they uh, do a very nice job in the park here. And now we're going to take it to another level, or another height actually, with Windseeker. Yes, and we hope that it does not seek the wind. 
Yeah, because if it does, they have a tendency to shut it down if the winds go above a certain level. Yeah. This is a interesting ride. A um, <laughs> little controversial in its um, adoption for this ride. Um, since the company who th- thought that they should have been bought by for it uh, makes those star flyer things with the little chains that dangle. Ugh. No, I just don't like leaving my life in the hands of two small chains at 200 to 300 feet above the pavement. Yeah, yeah. Mm. It's one thing to be on a wave swinger and have that. Okay, but then you put the same seats on something that goes, no, thank you. No, give me some nice restraints. Um, give me security. Thank you very much. Yeah. That's why I'm a fan of these, um, because they do take you up. You feel a lot more secure, and you get a. it's nice. You get a very good view of the park. Now, here we go, and we have the uh, it's a wild mouse. They call those apple apple because we're getting up the road. That's right. It's... A wild mouse. And wild mouse do what wild mouse do. That's correct. Now this is built by Mac. It's, it's a standard wild mouse that took the park in 2002. Um, yeah, it was originally um, Ricochet. That's correct. But, um... Yeah, they, they renamed this um, from Ricochet to Apple's Apple, and it's the same ride. It hasn't changed, but um, it's a good ride. Um, if you like wild mice, it's probably one of the better mild mice. That's correct. And these rides, they're not very high throughput, but they're just dang fun. Um a very wide variety of people can ride them and it just proves as a crowd pleaser whenever they put it in the park that is correct yes and here we are uh, we're starting to look down into the candy apple grove section in the park that's right there's a lot of um, little eateries games this is sort of like some people call it like a county fair section of the park um it's just filled with a lot of unique stuff. You have your carousel here at the at the um, the branching going into this area. Um, there's just a, a lot of little hidden things in this area that make it just worthwhile to take the family here. I mean, look at these wonderful carousel horses. Yeah, that's correct. I mean, these are all top-notch carousel horses on this and uh, who doesn't love carousel that's true that's true even if it's just listening to the music of it Here we are, continuing down on the um, the Candy Apple Grove Midway. That's correct, and we have, like you said before, we have some shops here, we have some eatery areas, things like that. Um, And it's gonna, it's just a nice section of the park. It has a good feel to it. Um, There's a lot of people, and you know, it's it's a nice place to hang out. That's right. It's like I said, the walkways in this park are real wide, and here we have um, a couple of the other um, rides here. The Bad Apple. Yeah. Um, this happens to be one of these pendulum type rides, which a lot of people enjoy. Yeah. And if you enjoy that, they have one here for you, which is great. Yeah. They, uh, the better ones give you a reminding of, the, of a sensation as if you're riding on a figure eight. 
the worst ones of those have a continuous speed on the rotation part of it and doesn't give you any pattern to comfort yourself with so that things that aren't supposed to come out might come out um, regurgitation is great for wild animals not so great for people Never even look. I'm always amazed by these because it, you think that it doesn't go that high, and it, it, to actually stand back and watch it, you're pretty amazed. And here we go, um, this is again in this section, um, another flat ride which is a staple at every park. You have to have a good selection of flat rides and they're definitely having that here. Yes they do. Um, unlike their sister park, which I think the flat ride count is like four. Yeah, they have a lot more than four, which is a good thing. Yeah. They really need to step up the game at some of these parks because um, the great big attractions are wonderful. But without these little ones, which I call people eaters, because they eat people off the midways and thin out the crowds at larger attractions, they, the lines do get long. That's correct. Um, but yeah, this section... Um is Candy Apple Grove. And what we're going to do here now, folks, is uh, I think there's some fungus among us. Yes, yes. Some um, well-timed and quite dapper fungus at that. Yes, and I believe they have an amphibious friend here. Yeah, yeah. Um, we'll see here in just a moment. We're going to leave him to it here. Another staple at a lot of these parks is the Dodgems. That's correct. Dodgem, don't hit them. And there they go. And unfortunately, we have a lot of hitters here. Yeah, yeah. People definitely did not pass their driving test. Well, you know, that's very true. 
except this is a great stress reliever. Yes, uh, originally they were designed as a way of relieving road rage. How's that working? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Perhaps if we'd have one of these at every rest stop? Yeah, that could work, that could work. Again, these are these are a wonderful um, ride here. They were des this one is designed as a raceway style because you have an island in the center, um, and not a random style. A lot of them are designed as random styles. And again, another walkway going on the opposite side, going back towards Windseeker. That's correct. And again, we have some. Um different rides here some little uh, flat rides here we have a wave swinger that's a pretty uh, staple at most parks yes it is yeah this one's no exception and uh, it seemed to be uh, quite a few people riding it that day yeah there's a lot of strategy when going to these parks and um, you have to find the right day to go um, usually that's on a Thursday or a Wednesday. For some reason, that's the slow points of the week. And here we are with a drop tower ride. Um, a lot of parks have these. Um, this one's no exception. Um, but, yeah, it, that's a great way to cool off as well because of the wind that blows. And, you know, you get a nice updraft. <laughs> or is that downdraft? Could be either, actually, depending upon which ride you're riding. But what's so nice about the this particular one is it does rotate slowly around, I believe. I, uh, I think they might have taken the rotation out of this one. Yeah, well. Um, some of them do rotate, mm -hmm. and when you reach the top, they give you the ability to have an observation tower type experience about being in a stifling cabin and then they sort of pull the floor out from underneath you and that's the drop tower now we're heading back into um, another section of the park well that's correct we're, we're still in candy apple grove but we're heading back towards the wind seeker and we can see Amer uh, the americana ferris wheel here and pretty soon on the there's Americana, like we were saying. On the right of that is one of the um, those um, oh sky coasters. Yes, I believe that's a sky coaster there, and that is of course another pay up uh, yes. charge. Yes, yeah, that's another paper attraction. Another paper attraction. Racer seventy five, formerly Rebel Yell. Yeah, yeah. There's some politics going on here. They deny it, but mm, we'll let you be the judge. Yeah, that's up to you. But yeah, this is uh, basically a complete clone of uh, the racer at Kings Island, I believe. Yes, it is. It is a complete clone. Um, at that particular time, that wasn't commonly done. And to have two coasters of the exact same identical layout was really unheard of. That's correct, but this did an usher in the uh, new age of coasters. And uh, the design of them was just an out and simple out and back, basically. But it provided a lot of fun elements for people and some airtime and things like that. And it proved very uh, advantageous for both parks, in fact. Yes, it did. Again, we're going to be going towards um, um, we're on more of our nice wide walkways here. I keep on mentioning that because the walkways are tremendously wide here. That's correct. And this wide walkway here actually is, we've just gone back. We're going past the Dodgers now. And we're going to be heading into the Safari. Yes, the Safari yes. Village the here. Safari Village. There is separate land type areas of the park but they've gotten a little askew as over the years yeah that's correct originally it was going to be like themed lands but eh, not so much now 
And again, one of our large plaza areas, which they uh, definitely use to their advantage in this park. That's correct. Um, they, s I, I almost hate to say it, they waste a lot of space in this park. Um, things are spread out. They're, they're, I mean, you have room to develop in this park if they just shrink the walkways by about 50%. <laughs> That's true, but what they do have is they do have a nice selection of roller coasters. And here we go with a um, another little premier coaster. Yes, that's right. This is the Stunt Track. That's correct. And this is themed to little Mini Coopers driving through different scenes of street life, basically. Mm, that's one way of putting it. Well, yeah. Or it could be just a normal Saturday night in the city, you know. <laughs> Hopefully not my kind of Saturday night, but that's all right. Hey, uh, you know, what's if it involves cops and a helicopter, uh, we <laughs> might have a problem. But hey, you know, uh, you know I shouldn't have parked there. Where were you parking, John? I can't tell you that. It's classified. Mm-hmm. Well, that's all right. <laughs> But anyway, this gives you a nice uh, couple nice elements. And here we are looking at one of our favorite snakes. Yes, this is Anaconda. It's a classic arrow, and it's arrow-rific. Absolutely. It's a wonderful ride. Um, actually pretty smooth compared to uh, some of the ones out there that I've uh, ridden on. Yeah, it, it is actually a well-done and well-maintained ride. Um, these arrows, these older arrows are getting harder and harder to find, folks. Um, people say, oh, they're jerky and stuff like that. Well, when you're dealing with, um, pre-computerized design of elements and stuff, this is what you're going to end up with. Yeah, that's true. Um, and, and this one's uh, a great example of a classic aero. Um, Aerodynamics was a great company because they made rides for 95% of the population. That's right. You could be s small, tall, thin, large, and you could usually fit on them. Now, you have a building in front of us. It has an 18 on it, and there are supposedly aliens inside. Well, these aliens are definitely inside there because if, if you ride this coaster, which is called Flight of Fear, there is a point you might be a little afraid. Yeah, you might be in the outer limits of things. That's true. Well, um, it, it's a coaster and it's inside of a building, so unfortunately we really can't give you a lot of video. But what we're going to do here is we're going to show you the next coaster in the lineup, which, as you can see, is pretty darn tall. Yes. Um, this is a Inamin design. Now, you're saying, hey, this looks sort of familiar. Well, there's another copy of this coaster just in the next state. That's correct. Um, this one is called Intimidator 305. Um, of course, the 305 is the height of the lift hill. Um, but it's the Intimidator being the Dale Earnhardt theme from um, NASCAR. Uh, may God rest his soul. Yes, yes. Um, it is doesn't really look like it's that shocking of a ride, but you're getting a lot of the zero Gs on the turns transitions. And there's very few rides that do turn transitions where you feel like you're going to fly out of the, the car. This one does it. Oh, yeah. This is a great ride. Um... Unfortunately, being an Inman design, uh, if you're of larger size, you may have a little bit of a problem. But definitely try the trust seat. Try, try to get on it if you can. Um, it, it's just a wonderful ride and a great tribute to a great man. As you can see, they do use the overhead restraints, unlike the, um, the um, center laps restraints. That does aid you in um, getting on. Now, folks, we're going to... Um, not going to lie to you here. This is old footage. Um, 
the ride was down at the time, but I had fortunately had some footage from a couple past times I've come here. And so we sort of stuck this in here so that you could see um, Volcano. That's right. And Volcano is a very unique coaster. And we're going to show you a little bit more of that in a few moments, I believe. I believe so. But we're going to head down the pathway here, and this is going to go into the volcano section of the park. And uh, it's it's another walkway, but it's a wide walkway. Yes, that's right. I mean, these walkways are just are massive in this. And here we have another classic, um, the Scrambler. That's right. Uh, th this is a staple at a lot of different parks. Um, a classic Scrambler is always good to have. I it's a people eater. Yes, yes. As you it, say. it draws people off the midway. If um, these are rides that are um, quick to turn people around in, and um, provide um, a pleasant thrill, but yet still being able to be something that a lot of people can tolerate. Yeah, that's true. I, I've seen different ones over the years, themed different ways, but um, this was just your basic scrambler, and um, it's just fun. Yeah. Yeah, and thankfully they the um, we got to get rid of this bug hasn't affected this ride as much. You can go to almost any amusement park and they're going to have a scrambler. Yeah, that's right. Um, you know, y y you don't want to get rid of all the old stuff. A, a lot of people and a lot of parks are pushing for that, a and there's really no need for that. Okay, here's an interesting toboggan ride. <laughs> um, yeah. This this one has trains that bend in the middle while you're sitting on them. Um, the track is made out of what looks to be a bunch of pipes all held together. And it is one fun ride. Yeah, that's right. You don't see many of these rides anymore. Um, yeah, this one here is called Avalanche, by the way. Um and each of the uh, bobsled cars is themed to a different country, just like you would see in the Olympics. That's right. And, like I said, you don't see this type of construction. Now, Inman makes made one as well. There was a bobsled ride. But th this is from Mac, and you don't see that many of them. And here we have a top spin. A very heavily themed top spin. Um, we have a um, idols heads. Uh, we have very remarkable um, things going on here. It has a wonderful soundtrack that goes along with it. Um, it's almost as much as fun watching it than it is um, as it is to write it. Yeah, that's correct, and and this one at least does go and do some flips and turns. Yes, um, we did encounter one that did not flip once. Darien Lake, take a bow. <laughs> <laughs> Great long ride, but no flips. Yeah, well, at least this one does, and, and here's where you get where they, like, kind of fake you out and think you're going to go into the fountains, and they hold you, and... It's a, it's a fairly, it's almost more, like you said, it's almost more fun to watch from outside the ride than actually being on the ride. Right. They also have some fire effects, which were down this day. Um, on, on previous times I've been here, they've had wonderful fire effects as well. And like I said, it's a real spectator's ride. Um, definitely get a chance to watch and ride this one. We also want to tell you that a lot of these rides were um, themed when there was a Paramount Park. That's right. Um, Paramount did a nice uh, job with theming, and unfortunately, uh, Cedar Fair hasn't really kept up with the theming on them. As much as we would like. But, but yeah. But we do have to give our hat, uh, tip our hats to Paramount for being able to create a great experience for both the spectator and as well as, as the writer. Now, 
Now we're heading into Camp Snoopy. And what a Camp Snoopy this is. I think this is one of the largest Camp Snoopies oh. that I've ever seen. In fact, it's as, it's as if it's its own planet. As you can see, they have a, a, a multitude of small rides, um, unique attractions here. It's all um, uplifting, cheerful, um, saccharine sweet. <laughs> I hear they work for peanuts. Oh, yes, they do. Um, but you. You just don't see this number of kitty rides in a in a park anymore. Um, I mean, it's almost a park within a park. Yeah, that's correct. Um, they, they have a lot of different unique rides um, for the younger set, of course. But um, you know, and you're going to see here in a moment, there are some rides that are actually quite large too. Yes, for it being a kitty park section. Um, I'm using air quotes here. Um, sorry, you can't see them. Um, but there's a wonderful fountain areas. Um, it's, it, like, again, wide midways. Things are really pushed out and around. They're not all jumbled together in one spot. And it's just a unique section of the park. And, and here's that one of those quite large rides we were referring to. Um, this is a very unique ride. I've never quite seen anything like it. I've no, I've never seen anything like this before myself. Um, I would like to see this actually in several of our other Cedar Fair parks, but we'll have to see if that comes to be. Yeah, it it, it seems like it's just a great ride, and um, you know, a lot of people were on it, really laughing and playing, giggling. You know, they were enjoying it quite a bit. So. Um, but w w I think we had a couple of surprises at this park, didn't we? Yes, we did. We had um, there were some special guests here. Um, well, I I can't say that they're guests; they're more like employees. Well, I did say they work for Peanuts, right? Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, it's uh, you know, we saw several uh, different uh, employees wor walking around that day. But there were certain ones that you don't necessarily see at other parks. Yeah, yeah. And, um, again, another wonderful section of the park here. And, um, like I said, there's just these huge walkways going, and the, and the rides are all over the place. And, oh my gosh, there's Pigpen! Pigpen! This is a character that you don't normally see at these parks. I don't know what prompted it, but we were so happy to see him, and looks like he was happy to see us. Yes, he was. They do have meet and greets here, and like I said, the the see Pigpen in a in, in one of these parks. That was a highlight of the day for me. I mean, it, I'm a big Peanuts fan, and everyone loves Snoopy, but seeing some of the minor characters, you just don't see them in the parks, and and it, it really um um was happy to see that that's right and now um we've come out of the peanuts uh area camp snoopy area Land and we're snoopy. on the outside of it and we're looking in and this is uh this coaster here this is the only one at any of the cedar fair parks or x paramount parks that you can actually film like this yes that's right um most of them are either have buildings around them or treed around them and it's neat to be able to be able to see the entire layout of this ride um, at one go. That's right, and um, yeah, this is this is a very nice. Um, I would call it a junior. Yes, it's more of a junior. It's not a kitty coaster. People call these kitty coasters. They're not kitty coasters. These are a junior coaster because you can still ride it if you're of appropriate size. Yeah, that's correct, and. Um, it's a it's a nice design. It's a John C. Allen um, design, and it's it's a good first coaster for a lot of different people and children. That's correct, um, and it's actually a great layout. I would actually like to see this layout puffed out to oh, a yeah. larger machine. 
Definitely, I'd definitely like to see it. Now, um, folks, here in a moment, you're going to notice something, and we're not going to sugarcoat it because, frankly, it would melt. Um, <laughs> it, it's going to start raining here, and we're trying to avoid the rain right now, and you might see big raindrops or ominous skies. And the ominous skies are leading us up to one thing. A scene of devastation, or devastator, or, um, domination. Dominator. And as you can see, the skies were getting ready to set loose their torrents upon us. So we had to very quickly film this this particular ride and give you an idea. Yes, it does rain here. Yes, it can be tremendous amounts of rain. Uh, that's correct, but really it didn't come until later in the day, which was nice. Um, and another thing about the rain at these parts, if it does have a threat of rain, sometimes it's a good time to go. Yeah, that's true. That's true. If it's if it seems like it's going to be a gloomy overcast day, go to the park. Yeah. You might find out that you can get on this ride about 15 times. Yeah. Um, this ride here is just a great ride. Uh, it has a very, very large loop in it. Um, One of the largest vertical loops. Yep. And this is a floorless coaster. Um, it's a B and M, uh, as many of you know. Uh, but yeah, it, it does some really nice um, overbank turns. Uh, some corkscrew that you're seeing here. Um, just a great coaster. Yeah. Even the final spin at the end is just all done perfectly. Yeah. And it fits well in this park. Um, they actually made this back midway kind of section, well, path, I guess, um, when they put this in. Yeah. And here we are coming off the lift hill. And we're going to see um, this train up close here. You did catch that person in the front of the seat, didn't you? Oh, okay. Into a very large loop. Into a cobra roll. And this is probably one of the smoothest Cobra rolls on any B&M. And now the mass exodus has occurred. It is starting to rain. That's right. We're back on International Street. We're on the other side right now. And we're heading towards the gate. Because the rain is coming. And it is coming in torrents. It just hasn't hit yet. Boy, Bill, we've had a one hell of a day here. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's been crazy, John. I mean, it's just been a whirlwind of a day. But you know what? Everything is great here. You're right. You're right. Good food, good entertainment, and uh, the rides were just wonderful today. Oh, yeah. Rides were great. Um, Grizzly was running awesome today. It was awesome. really yeah. booking it. Um, we got a chance to go on uh, Twisted Timbers, or RMC. Yeah. I, I, I thought it was a really good ride. Um it almost got to be a little too intense, though. Yeah, the, the, they haven't yet learned not to push the negative Gs on the hills a little too much because it literally feels like you're going to get ripped out of the seats. And yeah. for some people, that's a little disconcerting, and it's a little disconcerting for me because it could open up to future problems, some structural and other things. But it's, pro it's probably no worry whatsoever. It's perfectly safe. Go ahead, ride it, enjoy it. Yeah, I mean, you will enjoy it, I think. It, it just, it could be a little more extreme for some people, so just be careful with that. But, um, you know, we had we had a really great day here. Really uh, friendly people. Um, the staff was very attentive to your every need here. Um, definitely come here and spend some time. You'll enjoy it. Yeah, and like we always say, if you can't come to a small park, you can't go to a park be at a small park 
large part, go to a park. Because without you, these places don't happen. That's right. They'll, they'll be gone um, quicker than you can say Jackie Robinson. I mean, it'll... They just dry up, and they don't come back, folks. It's a rarity for a park to come back. Um, we've seen one or two do it, but get out, spend some money, enjoy yourself, and help these parks survive, please. And as we say, this was King's, King's Dominion. Dominion.